Hello everyone, in this video we are going to explore Fedora 36. Just to begin with, I have also tested their net installer version. It allows you to choose from an array of desktop environments. There are releases that are particularly tuned for certain work. You can't choose multiple desktop environments which was disappointing for me. I love to have options while logging in for no reason. The offline installer has fewer options, still they don't ask for your name and password during the entire setup. So, after the installation, first we are greeted by the Fedora Linux 36 welcome screen. Well, you can't close anything and there are no cross options to auto open activities as they're in GNOME. It is true because you need to enter your name and other details in order to proceed further, since none of them were asked during the installation procedure. Next page, we are greeted by Privacy First, which enables us to turn on or off our location services and automatic problem reporting. Then, we have the third-party repositories, which provide access to additional softwares from selected external sources, which include popular app drivers that are important for some devices. So, it also includes some proprietary software. Finally, you can connect your online accounts if you want. You can easily access your email, online calendar, contact, documents, and photos. Next, we have the About You page where you need to enter your full name and the username. Next, you enter a safe password. Finally, on first login, you are met with the freshness of the GNOME 42 desktop. Subtle UI changes that add up to a better appearance. There are rounded corners and selections, highlight cards, brand new system icons, and small feature changes. There are also new software based on GTK4 with LibAdvita, built at its core. GNOME feels fast and sleek. Subtle changes in the apps make it look a bit more modern. It also has a system-wide dark theme and suitable wallpapers. The surprise that even nature wallpapers now have dark mode option. Pretty soon, I hope we'll have a software there for tweaking photos to be used with dark mode also. GNOME 42 means you get access to GNOME Web, which has hardware acceleration enabled by default. Smoother scrolling and video playback, and it only gets better. LibAdvita along with GTK4 now uses hardware acceleration across the entire system. For every move, every animation you notice, GNOME never felt so smooth before. It really makes a difference. The software center has this new delightful user interface. You have this rating which gives us an idea how the app is and you have user reviews. You also get to see the source of the software. Lots of information stuffed together Still, it looks clean. If you really love to test softwares, here is the good news. Fedora comes with Flatpak pre-installed. You can get access to nightly build GNOME apps by entering a few lines of commands. Here is a complete list of apps you can get access to. I have done a complete review of GNOME 42. You can watch it from the card shown above. The idle CPU usage remains low most of the time. This is because Fedora comes with Linux 5.17 kernel and it has support for next generation processors from both AMD and Intel as well as enabling support for Intel's upcoming Alchemist graphics cards. Sticking with Intel, the company's new platform from where runtime driver nicknamed PFRUT is present in 5.17 Linux kernel. This, according to LWM, is allowing parts of the system firmware to be updated without the need of the restart of the system. There's also a new x86 Android tablet driver that provides practical workarounds to allow older devices to boot more recent Linux kernels and distros that sit atop them. Also introduced in Linux 5.17 is the support for the new Universal Stylus Initiative USI. This is an industry-led effort to create a common specification that will allow input stylus function cross-divides and irrespective of any vendor. 
currently in early stage though. Your file systems will work much faster with this release with BTRFS and X4 getting performance boost. The former has half the amount of metadata it logs by only copying index keys, while the other picks up the new mount API and supports for get or set FS levels. There are also new hardware supports. In fact, I was met with a pleasant surprise when my Bluetooth adapter was started working in this version of Linux. Linux distributions which I have used before, this thing was never detected. Having the Bluetooth driver work was really helpful. Also, now it uses Wayland as default. You can switch to X11, but just for mentioning, you have Wayland as the default option. Most of the users should be fine with Wayland, but you know you have, you have the option to choose. X11. An interesting thing that I noticed in GNOME that it even warns, warns you now if your screen is being shared. I guess they have a similar option for camera and microphone. Last but not the least that is Geekbench scores. Yes it depends on the software too. You cannot have a smooth ride with a novice driver. But this system from Fedora scores 1196 on single core and 3866 on multi core. I am using an Intel i3 10th gen processor with integrated graphics card on desktop. Now where's the catch? Remembering this is a beta release, I'm trying to conclude how close it is to stable as of now. Now running OBS for the first time crashed the entire system and, and it restarted. Also after the first boot Fedora's welcome screen the systems crashed. So there are some frequent system crashes as of now. GNOME's uh, screen recorder is not optimized. While recording the CPU usage reaches 100% while with OBS recording at 1080 pixel 60 fps is just fine and low on the CPU. I noticed an option for GNOME Classic both on Wayland and X11 but the weird part is that there is no provision for dark mode in the upper and lower bars. They look out of place with the entire system's dark theme out of the box. Even the system flyouts changes to dark light theme. A lot of inconsistencies. And you know how it feels when you have a light window or something while you are in a dark theme. Fedora overall feels very smooth and responsive. I'd really loved testing it out. GNOME 42 adds a fresh new overhaul to the entire system. Subtle changes that make Fedora look more modern and responsive. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe if you think this video was useful. I'll catch you in the next one.